It was August 30th, 1974 when the Cowden family left their white city, Oregon home to embark on a weekend camping trip. The family consisted of 28-year-old Richard Cowden, his wife, 22-year-old Belinda, and their two children, David, who was five, and Melissa, who was just five months old. All in all, a rather normal family doing ratherly normal things. The family set up their camp on the Siskiyou Mountains. They were only planning on being there from August 30th to September 1st, so they didn't pack for an extended stay. The last confirmed sighting of the Cowdens before their strange disappearance will be at the local general store in the town of Copper, Oregon. Richard, David, and their basset hound Droopy bought milk and headed back to their campsite. That night, they were supposed to meet up and have dinner with Belinda's mother, Ruth Grayson. But, as ill fate would have it, they never arrived at dinner. After the Cowdens never arrived, Ruth checked up on the family at their campsite. She stumbled upon a truly odd scene. Everything, including the family's truck and belongings, was at the campsite. But, there was no sign of the Cowden family anywhere. Ruth reported the scene to the police. The only items not accounted for were the family's swimsuits, which is a bit odd but might make more sense later. The most interesting fact from this is that the family's dog, Droopy, showed up at the local general store the next morning completely unharmed. A very large and very extensive search was put into action. It was one of the biggest in Oregon's history. Sadly, Nothing was found, and it seemed the case would go cold. That is, until seven months later, on April 12th, 1975, when a pair of gold prospectors stumbled upon the remains of a male skeleton tied to a tree on a rocky hillside. This was just seven miles from the Cowden family's campsite. Police were called in, and they found something that was nothing less than a sight of horror. Police had found the skeletal remains of a woman and two children stuffed inside a small nearby cave. After some time, the victims were identified as the Cowden family. Coroners could not determine the cause of death for Richard Cowden, but they were able to conclude that Belinda and David were killed with a shot to the head from a 22 caliber rifle. Melissa, however, was killed from severe head trauma. Needless to say, this was a grisly crime committed by one evil person. A volunteer who searched for the missing family back in September of 1974 claimed they had searched that very cave and they were not there, suggesting the killer may have moved the bodies after the heat died down. There were reports from a couple who were visiting from Los Angeles and camping in the same area as the Cowdens. They said they saw a pickup truck with two men and a woman at around 5 p.m., they said the people inside the truck looked like they were waiting for them to leave, which made them nervous, so they moved on. Aside from this and the discovery of the bodies, nothing else has really been found or documented. There is a suspect, however, a very strong one at that. Dwayne Lee Little was first convicted of a murder at the age of 15. He had killed a 16-year-old neighbor by the name of Orla Faye Phipps and raped her after she had died. He was given a life sentence. He would serve less than 10 years of the sentence after being paroled in May of 1974 on good faith that he had been rehabilitated. Duane was living with his parents in the nearby community of Rutch, which is a little more than 20 miles away from where the Cowden family was camping. Dwayne claims he was driving from Crescent City, California to Rutch in his pickup truck. He denied ever being present in Copper, even though it would be the fastest route home for him to pass through the Copper area. Dwayne claims he was driving from Crescent City, California, to Rutch in his pickup truck at the time. He denied ever stopping or even being in Copper, even though it would have been the fastest route home for him to pass through the Copper area. When officials investigated the truck, it was oddly clean and looked to have been picture perfect. It would seem Dwayne was clean, 
until a few months later, around Christmas time, when Dwayne's girlfriend called the police informing them that he had a 22 caliber rifle in his possession. She did this because Dwayne was allegedly cheating on her. She also mentioned that he was in the area during the time the Cowdens were camping, and she did see him with a 22 caliber rifle then. Also, some locals claimed Dwayne and his parents visited them the same weekend and even signed the guest book. Here's where the story falls into officials' favor. Even though the police never actually found his 22 rifle, just the report alone would revoke his parole rights. The only way he would not lose his parole would be to take a lie detector test about the Cowden family disappearance and the murders. Dwayne refused to take the test and would rather go to jail. He was again released and paroled in 1977, but was arrested once again in 1980 for raping and coming very close to murdering a pregnant woman. He was given three consecutive 20-year sentences and still sits behind bars at 70 years old. I usually don't give my opinions on cases, but I feel this one was such a doozy that I just have to put in my two cents. This is what happens when the system continually fails to protect us. This man killed and raped at 15 years of age. That is the biggest red flag you could possibly have that someone might not be fit for society. The fact that this man was released again and again, even after potentially killing an entire family is an outrage. It took him raping and almost killing another innocent life for officials to finally learn their lesson. This is a tragic story that more than likely could have been prevented. But we're not here to dwell on that. My prayers and best wishes go out to the Cowden family and the horrific loss of four family members on this tragic turn of events. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. The more likes and comments this video gets, the more YouTube promotes it to fresh new eyes. And all the new eyes we can get on these cases, the better. If you can, please share this on your Facebook, your Twitter, or anything else you have. Let's try to get this case spread around. If you're new to the swamp, why not hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a new video, as I upload them almost every single day on all things natural and supernatural. I'm always looking for your tips, and I'm always looking for your suggestions for new cases. So, if you want to comment down below letting me know any tips or cases you'd like me to see, definitely do that. I'll see you guys soon, with another creepy video.